Hello, my dear friends. May God bless you. And I believe that if you, if you are a person that is thirsty to know the truth and you are hungry for justice, a person who desires to be fed from God's word in order to have your strength or to be strengthened within and to be power, to receive power. So God's going to use this word to awaken your faith so that you can have a life that is superior. Yesterday we were talking that the Spirit of God's Word, whenever we read the Bible, when we read the Bible with attention and with submission, when we read it with humbleness, so the Spirit of God's Word, the Spirit of God's Word comes upon us and gives us strength. It makes us to be resistant to all the tribulations and afflictions and anguish and, and on and on. And this is what I want to continue talking about and most likely tomorrow as well. Because just for you to have an idea when, just an example, I spoke about it yesterday, when someone is afflicted and then they take the Bible and they read, for example, the Psalms, at the same moment they receive peace, they come to rest. And of course, that message or the spirit of the message from Psalms makes a person to be calm. But that calmness is just in that moment when a person is drinking from God's Word. Do you remember when King Saul, he, he would be attacked by a disturbing spirit that made him depressed, extremely depressed, so they would call David. David was a young boy that played har the harp. So they would call David to play the harp to bring calmness to King Saul. And in that moment that the song was played from the harp would bring peace to King Saul with a, a relief. In that moment, he would feel great. But once the music stopped and the harp was playing no more and David left, everything would come back. Music, matter of fact, does that. Whenever you listen to the music, you fall in love, you surrender, you feel, you go to the clouds. But when the song finishes, then that sensation of well-being, of strength, power, goes away. So that's what would happen with King Saul. That was influenced by the music from David's harp. harp. But God's word, on the other hand, is not like this. The word of God carries the spirit of God. And when a person hears the word of God, the seed, the spirit that is in the word makes dwelling place in that person's life. And if that person uses a faith with intelligence, and if they think, if they think God's thought, which are his words, so then the word is going to bring in them faith, a strong faith, a faith that will resist, a faith that is unshakable. And then when a person hears the word of God, 
they are able to receive from the word the spirit if such person pay attention if such person hears the word with attention if they hear it with humbleness and if they eat or drink from God's word wanting to satisfy their soul truly but if they hear God's word with criticism with nagging then nothing happens they hear the letters and the letters kill and what I want you to know so that so that you can experience the pleasure of God's word do you remember and you may know Psalm 91 Psalm 91 any person has heard of it and Psalm 91 starts starts like this pay attention it begins like this he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. The first verse. He who dwells in the secret place. Then the question is, but Bishop, what is the secret place? Where or where can we find the secret place of the Most High? Because if I know where the secret place of the Most High, in this moment I will go and run to it. I know that the secret place of the Most High is packed because everyone wants to hide. Everyone wants to shelter from the pandemic that this world is presenting to us. I want to know where is this secret place. <laughs> How wonderful. Huh? Where is the secret place? Are you, are you able to understand this? I'll tell you or what is the secret place of the Most High. The secret place. God is a spirit, and you know it. God is spirit. He is spirit, and obviously, the secret place of the Most High is also spiritual, right? You agree with me? So, the secret place of the Most High is a spiritual place, and it is strictly spiritual. So, because it is spiritual, only people that are spiritual, they are able to find this secret place. Only those that are spiritual have access to this shelter. Remember, I spoke that all those who are all those who are living beings, they are living creatures. And when we have the encounter with the Lord Jesus, we are no longer living creatures to become what we, we mentioned, life-giving spirit. So when we are born of the water and of the Holy Spirit, we become spiritual life-giving spirit and when we are life-giving spirit like I know I am so then I know where the secret place of the Most High is and I have access to the secret place and that's why I'm sharing it with you the secret place of the Most High are for, are for those who are the children of the Most High a people who are born of the water, which is the baptism of water, the burial of your life from sin, 
and born of the Holy Spirit. So, the secret place is spiritual. And wherever you are in this world, wherever you may go in this world, any given place that you may be at, so then you have access to the secret place of the Most High. So, when we read, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High, He who dwells. So, who dwells in the secret place? I already answered. They dwell in the secret place, people that are spiritual, that are born of this, the water and of the Holy Spirit. So, those who are baptized with the Holy Spirit, they know the secret place and they have access to the secret place. So, he who dwells, those who are born of the Holy Spirit, are those who dwell in the secret place. Where is the secret place? The secret place is spiritual. It's a spiritual place where he dwells. He, uh, he dwells in his secret place. And he, in his secret place, is spiritual. Ah, Bishop, but I want to know more. What is the meaning of this secret place? Well, pay attention. I'll give you this example that many, many people know. Remember when Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist and he received the Holy Spirit. Right after he came out from the waters, he was led by the Holy Spirit to the desert, to be tempted, to be tempted, actually to learn. And then, Jesus went to the desert and he stayed 40 days and 40 nights with no food. And when there was a moment that he was hungry and the devil appeared trying him, saying, if you are the Son of, of God, transform these stones into bread. And Jesus told Satan, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. So, it's not only by bread alone that man shall live, but will live by every word from God's mouth. So, Jesus answered Satan to the devil's face, because he was spiritual and because he had the spiritual nature. So, he had the dwelling place, the secret place that gave him support and protection for him not to be tempted and fall on the devil's trap. So, God's word is this secret place. <laughs> This is interesting. How God, how God is great and glorious. This is our daily bread, friends. Take advantage of it. So, God's word is this secret place. So, whenever you are going through desperation, whenever you are afflicted, whenever, for example, you, you caught coronavirus and, every, and everybody is saying, do this, do that. Go to the doctor. So, the person becomes scattered. And then, if that person is spiritual and they were born of the water and of the Holy Spirit, so then they do not dwell and they do not accept those words of comfort or peace because those words are empty. What they, they do is that they shelter with God's word. They say, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd. So, Lord, you are my shepherd. So, I dwell in you, in your word, in your promise. And what you, what you tell me cannot fail. 
in no, in no such a way. If the word of God fails, it's because God fails. And then he's not God. So he himself said, my word will not return to me void. The word that proceeds from my mouth will not return to me empty, but it will do what pleases me. So God's word is the secret place, is the secret place of the Most High for those who are spiritual. So for those who are living creatures, it, it has no meaning. But for those who are life-giving spirit, so then they match according to the promise of God and they are able to demand from God the protection. They are able to charge God to be to be saved. And then you will you will read on Psalm 91 that he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High, it continues saying, is the Lord who is your refuge and my fortress. So, you can confirm on the whole Psalm 91 that there is safety when a person they lean and when they shelter upon the word of God. Because they may say, I'll say to the Lord, He is my refuge. You, you are my refuge. And then says, A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you, for God is your refuge. This psalm is long. But you should read it slowly and to confirm that those who surrender to this word, they match and they are able to enter the secret place and they are able to be at peace. They have peace. They are safe. Remember one more testimony and glorious testimony when Jesus was in the boat and he was sleeping and then came that storm and the, and the boat was being tossed left and right and the disciples, the apostles, they were fearful. We are going to die. And of course, they, they spoke like that and react like that because they were not baptized with the Holy Spirit. They had not been sealed with the Holy Spirit. They were not born of God or of the Spirit or of the water. They only were baptized after Jesus resurrected and then sent the Holy Spirit. But it is known that they were horrified in fear. And it was then that they woke Jesus up and Jesus told them, Why are you fearful, men of little faith? I'm here on the boat. If you perish, I'll perish too. <laughs> Very strong point, right? If all this storm would make you sink, I will also sink. And they didn't have that perspective. So, when Jesus, when he told them, when he told the storm, stop, and the storm stopped. And then Jesus told them, taught, Jesus taught them a lesson. What did Jesus use? Jesus used the word of God. He used the word of God. So, when a person is spiritual, so then their word is spiritual. And because it is spiritual, they have power above all powers of this world. 
from all of the universe because it is God's power that moves in them. I remember, and I've told you this experience many times, and it's worth sharing again, that in the time of need, I took the Bible. I said, Lord, you said, you, you're the one who promised. I want to know if you are the one who said, you open the windows of heaven and will pour down blessings without measure to those who are faithful in the tithes and offerings. You are the one who said it. But now, I find myself desperate. I see myself in a hole, in a deep hole. And then, I made a test with God. I, I dwelt in His Word and asked and I, we, we united in our faith, in prayer. I made a prayer that was not even 30 seconds. I charged that promise. I sheltered in that word. And the next day I had the answer. So, dear friends, if you, if you have the baptism of the Holy Spirit, then your doubts, your questioning, those questions that I would say even unsafe questions that has no spirituality, those questions that are foolish and you would never do them anymore. And I see people, whenever they ask questions here on in Instagram, they make questions that are so, so childish and foolish. I'm sorry for the, the term. But it's, you know, I have the desire not even to read it. But it's better for me to read than to be blind about it, right? So, when a person does not have the Holy Spirit, they are, they are foolish. They are driven and taken by the winds of this world. But when a person receives the baptism of the Holy Spirit, so then they are wise, they have strength, they have God's power, they are living in the secret place of the Most High. And whatever it is, the situation or the complicated situation they are going through, they throw themselves, they enter and they dwell in the secret place of the Most High and they find refuge, and they find rest, peace, and they find certainty, assurance, because that's what people want, to be safe. Everyone wants to be safe. And what is the safest place in this world? Is the secret place of the Most High. There is no other place. Only the secret place of the Most High is immune from any evil force, any pest that this world may bring and have. So, friends, learn to use your faith with intelligence. In fact, tomorrow, at the evening, at the Universal Church, we will continue talking more about it, so that you, so that you may not follow so that you may not follow the crowd without knowing who is being followed or who are they following. Friends, you who desire, you who desire to have this power for any given day, any given time, in the middle of the night or the hospital, in the prison, if you are under the bridge, whatever it is your situation physically, or social, or spiritual. If you receive the Holy Spirit, you are going to have access immediately to the secret place of the Most High, because this secret place is the Most High Himself that is ready and with the doors open to receive you. So you should use this faith with intelligence, with this wisdom, 
The secret place of the Most High is God's word. That's why he said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from God's mouth. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. I hope I have helped you. And tomorrow, we will continue speaking more about it, especially in the evening. We are not only going to speak and teach and giving you tips in the Universal Church, but we will be bringing you to live and to have the moments that you are with us in the evening, in the main service, to God's shelter. May God bless all of you in the name of Jesus. Amen.